Good morning, YouTube. Um, just after this job at this house here, I'll let you have a wee look of it from the outside. It's just a wee house, but it's going to get a loft conversion. So, this way you come in the door. There was a wee, there was a vegetable door here, not a carrot, and then there was a wee cupboard. In fact, when you look up in the ceiling, that's a shape. So I knocked all that down, and this partition, I just sort of cut it because that's where my staircase is going to go, here. And I put up this new partition here, because that's where the staircase goes against. So I'm going to cut a big hole out, and put my staircase in, and I'll make that back at a workshop. This me just back through the baker, and the baker down the road from here down the road from here beautiful beautiful baker get my sandwiches and they do this chocolate cookie and it is just absolutely gorgeous so for the past three days i've been in buying this chocolate cookie but today there wasn't any left and the guy that was in front of me he said oh i've just bought the last one i'm sorry and i thought oh man he says but you can have one of mine but you'll have to kiss my bald head Weirdo. Mm, so good. Right here I am at the workshop and I've just drawn my plan view of the staircase. That's a side view. And here's the plan view of the staircase. I'll set the overhead camera up so that you can see me drawing it. But basically, I will mark out, this is a sheet of plasterboard, just happened to be in the workshop it's handy and it's made of paper so i'll mark a hundred millimeter border all the way around three sides and then i will mark my stringer size 900 millimeters is the width of my stair so from there off my previous line i could almost hook it onto the edge of the sheet measure one meter because I know I've got 100 millimeter of a border. That's the next thing, and then I'll draw that in. I'll then draw my new post here. It's a 90 mil new, new post, in which how I find position that back and forth is, here's a 900 mil str stringer coming in here. It's going into the center of the new post. So whatever distance that is from there, I'll do the same from here to here. And that sets my distance. From a new post. Also I draw in about eight millimeters here because that is the the rabbit in that I'll do to remove a housing for the tread to go into each post position. And the same here is about eight millimeters and then once I've done that I'll begin to try and line up using some sticks just to kind of gauge where each rise would be. Now the going of this is 225 for each tread so it works out about uh, 245 millimeter of a tread by the time you add on the overhang from the nosing so I'll try and get at least that on the center here's my center line at least that there so that's what you see me doing with lining up with the tape measure to try and get at least this 225 millimeter going on the center of the tread. The other thing is, in most regulations throughout the whole of UK is like this, you can't have less than a 70 millimeter of a tread at the corner where it terminates at the post, which I had marked out 50 millimeter from rise to 50 millimeter of rise because you have got a 21 millimeter overhang, which will give you your 70 millimeter minimum at the post you understand i'm not a teacher i'm just showing you this is the way that i do it one guy who i really got a lot of respect for and i'll put his name in the description below his name is mark bullock now this guy he is a stair guy in the uk as far as, as far as i'm concerned some of his work is absolutely brilliant and what he doesn't know about staircases is not worth no one. He's just started up a YouTube channel, so I'll put a link to his YouTube channel below. Um, and what you'll see is mostly 
him just putting the staircases together. He does it on site and it's remarkable. This guy works alone, I, I think. So you've really got to be quite imaginative when you're working by yourself because some of the things are quite heavy and I know about it. So anyway, we'll bash on. Now that my drawing's done, and that's it. Of course, that's the bottom. That's where it starts, coming up. That's one, two, three. You don't need to draw in your straight threads. Um, I just number them. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then towards the top, it starts to wind around again. That's number 10, 11, 12, 13 is your top. The total height from floor to floor is 2 meters 651, which gives you an individual rise of 204 millimeters. That works it. Now, in my area, and I think it's the same all over the UK, you can't have a staircase more than 42 degree angle. So if it is, it's a fuel. Anyway, I'm going to mark my new bases next to show the tread coming in at each part of the new. So a bash on, set up a camera, stop walking, shut up, get on with my job. Now, that's all my stringers done. I should also mention that when you're routering out a stringer that like here but you always start from that end or the left hand side so that when you're routering out this corner here doesn't break off with the with the rotation of the router the breakout if you used to start at this side here when you when you go into this the router this one out that corner breaks out so you always start at the left hand side working up. So that's the mall done. So that's the top. That's the bottom. This is the top. This is the left hand going up. And this is the right hand. Now with this one, we've got two new posts to put on. Top and bottom. So that's the next thing we're gonna do is to do the new posts and once all that's done I can then start making my treads and bashing them up nice lighty it's not raining today I'll have a wee look outside I think let's get out the workshop for a while behind that tree is down there is the sea it's a beach, it's a famous beach, Balmady Beach. And just recently, this past year and a half or so, they made these wind turbines. That was the ones that Donald Trump was moaning about. <coughs> I should have just gave Donald a phone and said, don't worry, it doesn't make a noise. Right now, what I'm doing here is, I'm measuring off my drawing, like from the corner in the corner of this post here and that's the corner of this post here and I'll measure from there to the rise of number one number one so from there to there and then I've marked the same from there to here I've got another rise coming off for number two so from there to here I'll mark that on here and then I'll go around to the other face which is the other face and I'll begin to mark the rise there and then I'll go around to the other face which is next to nothing on it and so forth. Do you get the idea? measure like 60 millimeters jigsaw that off form a nice big tenon and we'll move over the way to go Thank <laughs> you. 
face mark, it's the nose, and I'll go and cut that, cut that out. Of course I've got to come down to my newel, but I think if I cut the worst, get the worst way, and then I could plane it to fit so that it's nice, fits exact, and then I could take out where my newel post goes. Right, let's crack on with that. Now here to here is 21 millimeters. 21 millimeters from there to there. That's the overhang on the tread. But on your winders, from here to here, it's not. It's about 26, 25, 26 millimeters. It's longer because it's on an angle cut. So here's what I do here. I put it forward and I get my pencil. And I just go like that and I maybe take off, I'll take off the first five millimeters there so it cuts in so it fits and by doing that it's hitting before it's home you can see it's not there because there it is you understand also when you look at the top of the tread on the other side of the tread, you can see that it's not home here. You can see that it's not home. So I'll nibble off a wee bit there and then we'll try it again. Right, here's another wee tip. I'm doing my rises now. So I've got to get a rise fitted in from the back into the groove in here. And so I try to measure it in one piece and try and cut one piece and then try and fit it in I'll take a wee piece and I'll fit it in there angle it back slightly so that it goes right to the to the point same up here and to there then I'll just measure this distance between here and here I'll write it on here take the two pieces over to the saw cut and copy the angles because they're slightly angled top and bottom and Bob's your uncle That's all done and it's not all screwed together. It's all ready to dismantle. I'll give it a sand and I'll probably give the treads a coat of shellac just to seal them. Keep them clean just in case a woman wants to keep it pine, unpainted, not a carpet. So that's that. So I'm going up in the world now. So I'll knock this thing apart like a big jigsaw puzzle 
the seat from behind. I've not jammed it up with my wedges, of course, and I've not screwed in the risers because it's all got to be dismantled. And then take it to the job because it's going to end a tricky position. Or I would have made it in a one off. We could have lifted it in. So tempting to do that, but so heavy. I could, I could almost make it in a one off and just put it right up, but it's just, oh, health and safety. Okay, okay. Bar show on. Well, good morning. Here we are on the job, and I am creating my stairwell. Ripping out my holes. I've cut back my joists from above. I doubled up in my bridles, both ends, and doubled up on my bridle ascent too. So now I'm going to continue. I'll put the camera on a time lapse. We'll see how we go on. I might just go and have a cup of tea first. Okay guys, thanks for watching, if you've got any questions to do with stairs then just ask me, put in your comments and don't forget to like and share and even share it on your Google Twitface thing that people do. In a couple of weeks I'm going to be in Birmingham in uh, the NEC at Maker Central, so hopefully I'll see some of you guys there. I'm looking forward to being there. Goodbye for now and thanks for watching.